Night shots never quite seem to capture the magic of the blue hour, but in this tutorial, you'll learn how to make a night scene truly glow with the new HDR processing in Adobe Camera Raw. Before we start working on the high dynamic range or HDR edit, let's begin with a standard edit by double clicking our raw smart object. And let's just start working on the general problems with this image. We've got some converging verticals, all the edges here tilt towards the center. And we can correct that by going down to the geometry section, open that, make sure you can see these manual transformations. We have to open up the little disclosure triangle and just click and drag the vertical. And while I'm holding, I can see that grid. And I'm gonna move this until I see the buildings look parallel to the vertical part of the grid. And minus 80 nicely corrects all those areas. Now I've got this transparency here where I've manipulated the image and I don't want that, so I need to crop. But if I just go click on Constrain Crop, it's automatically removed for me and that looks really good. Although I do notice the top of the image was not cropped and I would like to remove part of that light, make it a little bit less distracting. So let's go click for a manual crop adjustment, make sure it's unlocked, and we can click and drag down the top edge like that to just remove that little bit of light that I didn't want to see. Go back to our edit, and I'm noticing that this light pole is bent. It's curved when it should be very, very straight, and that's because of the geometric distortion of my lens. So I can go switch over to the optics module, and then here we have this use profile corrections. If we turn this on, you see how nicely it straightens out that line. It is also applying a vignette correction, and I don't really want to lighten up some of these corners. So let's go turn that off by setting the vignette to zero. And now we have just the geometric fixes. And that looks really good. And I think we're ready now to start working on the color and luminosity of the image. Let's start with the color by bringing up the temperature. Just warm things up, maybe to around 6,800. Let's bring up the tint to around plus 10 or so, which I think is looking nice in the sky but is excessive down in the shadows. There's this magenta light down below and the color cast it has down below is being accentuated too much with this extra magenta tint. So I'd like to bring this back a little bit in the shadow area and I can do that by sliding down to the bottom where in the camera calibration tab, we have the shadow tint slider. So we just bring this towards the green to offset what we've done there. And I'm gonna push this pretty far, like maybe minus 60 kind of nicely neutralizes that and has a nice magenta green balance across the image. While I'm down here, I often like to take the blue primary saturation and slide that up. You see if I push it way up to the top, we get to something that's way too strong, but you can see how it nicely can you know, help bring out some color in the sky and those warm lights. Let's bring it back to about plus 10. Just a little bit is all this image needs, but I do think it is helpful. Let's go back up top. And now I'd like to work on the sky, which is looking like it just doesn't have as much contrast. And so let's go bring up the dehaze slider to something around plus 20, I think is helping to bring out a little bit more in that sky. But in doing so, I'm starting to push a lot of blue and not getting as much contrast as I want. So let's maybe go reach for a local adjustment mask to push that further. So I'm gonna go click for the local adjustments, select my sky, I've got the sky area selected, that looks great. And now I just need to go push a little bit of contrast, maybe push this up to about plus 30, 40 ish. That blue, I want to get rid of that. Let's go down to the saturation and bring that back to something like minus 10 or 12. And we can just look before and after. If we hover over the mask, we see this little eyeball. We can hold down and see here's before and here's after. Just makes the sky a little bit more moody and it's kind of I think helping separate things from that building, letting it feel like the building's glowing a little bit more. So that looks good and I can click escape to close down my local adjustment. I'm back to the regular global adjustments. Now with what we've done with clarity, I think especially we've started to clip our blacks and the image just looks kind of dark in some areas. Let's go bring up our exposure by about a third of a stop, somewhere around there. And I'm still clipping a bit in the blacks. Let's go bring our blacks up to avoid that. So maybe around plus 10 or plus 12, something like that. I think it's helping to improve that image quite a bit. And at this point, I think we've got a great looking SDR version or standard dynamic range version of this image. What we're gonna do is work on the HDR or high dynamic range, but we're not gonna do it just yet because I wanna create a separate copy of the image so we can compare. And I also wanna note that this HDR button, if you don't see it, you need to make some quick changes in Photoshop in order to see this option. So let's say, okay. And so here's our standard version of the image. And I do see the cropping caused some extra transparency because the document now got smaller. So we need to get rid of this. So let's take care of that by going up to image, trim, and just let it remove the transparent pixels. 
So that's been fixed, and now we can zoom back in, view it large. And so there's our standard version of the image, and now we want a high dynamic range version. And for that, I'm gonna duplicate my smart object, not the standard way, but if I right click and go choose new smart object via copy, I'm gonna have an independent copy that I can adjust separately. So any changes I make to this version won't affect this version, they'll be separate, and we can edit our HDR. But remember, I mentioned that we have to make some changes to be able to use the HDR features. So go up to Photoshop settings, go down to the technology previews. Now this only applies at this point if you're on a Macintosh, you'll have this option, precise color management for HDR display. This is what will allow you to see HDR if you're on a Mac. It's not available for Windows at this time, but if you're on a Mac, definitely turn this on. And then when you're working with layers in Photoshop, you'll see the actual benefit of HDR in Photoshop. You also have to restart Photoshop after you change this. Now, uh, there are some ways we can work around this for Windows, and I'll show that a little bit later. The other thing we want to go set is go to File Handling, the Camera Raw Preferences. And in here, there's a separate Technology Preview section, and you want to turn on this HDR output. This is available on both Mac and Windows as of ACR version 15.1 and later. You need to turn this on and restart Photoshop, and then you'll have HDR inside of Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll say OK here. Say, OK, I didn't make any changes, so I don't have to restart, but you probably will need to do that. So we're now ready to edit the HDR or high dynamic range version of our image so we can really make these lights glow in the buildings. Let's double click on it. We're back in Adobe Camera Raw, starting where we left off. And to enable HDR for this edit, I need to go click that button for HDR. And immediately, this image just looks beautiful in a way that the original could never capture. These lights in the building got much brighter. The neon edges got much brighter. Everything about this image is a much more compelling and interesting version of this cityscape image. Now, to really see the benefit of this, you need to be using an actual HDR monitor, a brighter monitor. And on YouTube, you'll be able to see some of this difference just because of the way that YouTube tries to render it in a way that's visible to you on a standard monitor. I've got the website below, gregbenzphotography.com slash HDR, where you can test your monitor, see what your capabilities are but you truly do need to see this on an HDR monitor to understand just how beautiful this can be. So what we've done here by clicking this button is start showing data that was otherwise compressed or clipped in the original image. As a standard dynamic range image, all these bright areas, they exist in the raw, but there's no way of showing all that content without making the midtones and the shadows get too dark. So rather than squeeze down the areas of mid-tone detail that we want to see, the trade-off we make in raw processing traditionally has been to take all that highlight detail and just cram it into like the last little bits of the standard dynamic range. But when we turn on HDR, we're actually able to view it as it was recorded. We can see the true way that the camera saw this scene and just by default, we're getting that extra benefit if you've exposed to the right and you have this content. Now you might click the HDR button and not see a change in your image, and if you don't, that's okay. You can still make changes below in Adobe Camera Raw to bring out that extra content. You don't necessarily need to expect that every time you click this button, you get immediate benefit, but further changes down below will start to really help make your image sing. Now, when you've done this, oftentimes, just sliding down to the curve section and bring up the light slider can really help. Now, this curve works differently from the curve you're used to. Notice that we see SDR, and HDR on the curve, meaning that the left side of the curve is standard dynamic range. This bottom part here is everything you normally would see across the entire curve. And this HDR content is new. It goes all the way up to 500 if you're looking at new numeric values here. If we click over to this version of it, we can click and see that the far right is 500 on this version of it. So we've got an expanded range here of values that if we were back, I'm gonna go and hide the basics tab here, Without HDR, we see this version, all the tones are across the full range. With HDR, those tones are squeezed below, and then some of them can live up in HDR that normally we're getting squeezed. So you don't see a whole lot of content here, but there's a little bit of tail to this histogram, just like below where you have SDR on the left and HDR on the right. The histogram is now showing standard range on the left and high dynamic range on the right. If you wanna actually understand this in greater detail, in the basics tab, there's this little high dynamic range area. And if we open that up, you can ignore this preview for SDR display and just simply focus on visualize HDR ranges. If we turn this on, we get this multicolor overlay showing us exactly how many stops over 
standard range we're getting. So here's one stop brighter than what we'd normally would get. And here's two, three, and four. So this magenta, the center of this light is four stops brighter than what you would normally see in your image. It's tremendously brighter. And so that extra range there, you can see I'm getting up to four stops of extra display with this. Also note that the orange bars here are telling me how much I can actually see on my screen. So I can edit the content all the way up in the red zone, meaning that it exists in the image, but I can't see it on my screen. It still gets clipped. So your screen ultimately limit how much HDR benefit you can see. If this whole range is red, then everything will be clipped on your monitor, but you can still save the image and view it on another monitor and you could see the benefit elsewhere. So that's kind of roughly how HDR is working. Let's go and brighten this up by grabbing this light slider and push it up considerably to something like maybe 75 or so. And look at that from before to after, how that just really makes the sky pop, makes those buildings pop. And this is the kind of thing you could do even if your content didn't start in the HDR range, this could help really bring out that extra value. Now in doing so, I do feel like my yellows have gotten a little bit too warm. So let's go down to the color mixer and bring this down. I'm finding that the Adobe Camera Raw processing for bright yellows is oftentimes a little bit too punchy and just bringing down the yellow slider in the color mixer can really help with that. The other thing I'm seeing in this, and it's hard now to compare to my original. If I turn off HDR, the curve doesn't work the same way. So it's not a direct comparison, but the shadow areas have gotten a bit darker. I'm seeing kind of a clipping warning. It works a little bit differently. But the face of this building, I would like to see a little bit more detail here. So for that, let's do another local adjustment. We'll go up, click for a local adjustment. Let's go create a new mask. And I want to select subject, which oftentimes can work on even a building. So the building looks great. I really just want to work on this part of the image, not the light pole, not this part of the image over here. So let's go remove those by brushing it out. So I can go over and say subtract and I'll go use the brush to subtract. So now I can just paint out that area. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and just brush right over those areas. In fact, if I go and kick up this flow a little bit, it'll work a bit faster here. And I'm just removing areas that I don't want to really adjust with this adjustment here, just the face of that building, shrinking down the brush as needed. I'm not worried about being too precise here for this particular edit. If I'm worried about that, then I should be switching over into Photoshop and using Luminosity Mask or something a bit more precise, but I think that ought to work pretty well. So with that, now let's go make an adjustment and see how it did. So I'm gonna go slide down and let's go and probably bring up the whites a bit. So that, you know, see if we bring up the whites, see how that's lightening up the face of the building. So maybe just bring that up a little bit to like plus 25 or so. Let's go add a little texture and some clarity. So let's bring up our texture quite a bit. You can see that really brings up some little details. So maybe something like 25-ish and let's bring up our clarity, which actually is darkening things there. So just a little bit like plus five, but it creates some nice separation. And let's just see from before and after. So here's our mask of the building. If I click and hold, you can see before to after how it's just bringing out some more detail in the face of that building that I think really helps. And I could let it survive in this part of the building as well if I wanted to, but I think it's just this part of the building where there were no lights on that really benefits from that adjustment. So at this point, I can click escape a couple times to get back to the regular edit. And I don't think there's a lot more I need to do here right now. But while we're in here, uh, before we compare to the original, I wanna make a couple notes on some tools that are different in HDR. When you're working on this, of course, I showed how the curve works differently. It has a whole new range, and so the same slider values will work differently in HDR. The color grading at the moment does not work on the HDR range. Hopefully that'll be fixed uh, sometime soon, but you may see some strange results. I'd avoid that for HDR. And then detail, the sharpening that you add to it in HDR, you actually need to increase the amount to get a similar match at this point. And again, that may be subject to change, but just a few things that work a little bit differently for HDR. But otherwise, the controls look very, very familiar, other than the fact we're just getting this brighter extra result through the extra range we have here showing in our histogram. Let's go say OK, and let's see how we did. And I immediately see that it looks clipped. And the reason for that is when I opened up the smart object from Lightroom, which does not understand HDR at this time, it just gave me a 16-bit document. But to see HDR in Photoshop, I need a 32-bit document. So I've been working with a raw smart object. All the data is there. I just can't see it yet. So I'm going to go up to image mode, 32 bits per channel. And I'm going to say, don't merge. I want to keep these as separate objects. 
and don't rasterize. And then what I get when this is done should look exactly like what we had in Adobe Camera Raw. And you can see now that benefit of HDR showing inside of Photoshop. And again, you won't see this if you're on Windows at this time, there is no option. But at the bottom of your image, there's this little option to click for more ways of viewing information down below. Click the 32-bit exposure, and you can slide that to the left or right to make it brighter or darker. And that will let you explore the tones in your image, no matter what the capabilities of your screen might be. And then you can just double click to bring it back to the neutral default. So this, even on an HDR screen, can be helpful to help explore areas that are a little bit blown out on your monitor because even HDR monitors have their limits. So let's now compare from our original standard dynamic range to our HDR, and you can see how dramatically improved that version of the image is. Overall, the lights look beautiful. There's one part of the image I don't love, and that's the blue in the sky on the left it looks a little bit unrealistic. It's another area where I feel like the HDR processing in RAW could be improved a bit further but that's pretty easy to fix that. We'll just go in Lumensia and create a lights luminosity mask target in that area, which we can desaturate. So let's go click on, let's try the zones. Let's try zone D, let's try zone C. That seems to be hitting that area pretty decently. Let's go work with that. And I'm gonna go click for a, an HSL adjustment. And then inside of it, go and bring down the saturation quite a bit to like see something like minus 40 or 50. And then that's a global adjustment right now because that you know zone C is everywhere and I don't wanna bring out the, reduce the color in some parts of the image here. So let's add a group mask to hide it and then we'll paint it in where we want it. So I'm gonna go and option click on group, which gives me a black mask that hides things to begin with on this top mask here. And now just hitting B for my brush with white paint. And I'm gonna go and just paint on this part of the image which just brings that area down. And now I've got a nice clean result. And let's now compare from our standard image to our final HDR. And now be sure to check out this next video to learn more about HDR and see the links below for more information on how to test and evaluate your screen for HDR support.